Today on the channel, I want to talk to you guys about the Cube Autopilot and specifically a carrier board for it from Airbot Systems. Now, if you don't know what the Cube is, I've made a number of videos on this system on my channel before, and I will link to them in the description of this video as well, and I would suggest checking it out. However, just to give you a quick overview, the Cube Autopilot is a flight controller or autopilot, which is modular, and it's designed to be used with Ardrapilot and PX4. The benefit to this system is that it is modular and it consists of a cube module as well as a carrier connection board. And the way this system works is you can choose the module that best suits your needs, such as the cube black, the cube orange, or the cube purple, like I've got in my rover here. And then you can choose a carrier board that best suits your application as well, depending on what features and size you want. Now, one of the big benefits of this system is that all of the modules are compatible with all of the carrier boards. And that means that you're able to choose the best one that suits your needs. Now, for me, I have tend to use either the standard carrier board or I've got the carrier board mini located in my rover down here. Now, the nice thing about this carrier board from Airbot is that it actually has the connections on the top of it rather than around the side. And what I'm going to do in this video is give you guys an overview of the board itself. And then I'm going to take you through installing it into my rover because I'm going to replace the carrier board mini that I've got installed because it's a bit of a pain to get to the connections. Further to this, I've also 3D printed up a bracket to hold this carrier board as well. And I'll talk to you about that too, as we are fitting it. And I'll put the design for this in the description of the video as well. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take a closer look at the carrier itself. Taking a closer look at the kit, it comes in a small plastic case and also includes a power distribution PCB board as well. Now, the main carrier board uses the standard DF1780 pin connector that you will find on the bottom of the cube. And this means it is compatible with all models, including the new cube orange. It has all of the same power inputs that we had on the original carrier, including dual main power inputs with redundancy. It has all of the usual serial ports and it also also has the standard headers for your RC input and output as well. Now it is using the same JST GH connectors as we find on the original carrier board too and it does have all of the other stuff including S bus in and out as well. Overall it really is just a miniature version of the standard carrier board very similar to the carrier board mini just with a different layout. Moving around to the back of the board, the first thing you will find is the PSM module soldered to the bottom. Now, this is the main power regulation board that provides the main power input control for the cube. Alongside this, you will also find the receiver input pads and voltage pads above it, which allow you to set the input type as well as the voltage for your receiver. Then looking around the rest of the back of the board, you will find the labeling, which tells you what each of the ports does, as well as the labeling from Airbot Systems itself. As I mentioned, included with this kit is a power distribution board, and this is simply a PCB which has the pads for connecting your main power inputs and outputs. It doesn't contain any circuitry, and it doesn't actually have to be used if you don't want to, but it is nice that they include this with the kit. Overall, this is a nice small carrier board that is a little bit bigger than the standard one, but it does give more convenient port location. OK, so next we are going to install this new carrier board in my Rover. Now, I originally was using the carrier board mini, but one of my pet hates with it is a lot of the connections are on the side. And in this application, I would prefer to have the connections on the top. And that's where the new board from Airbot comes in. Now, as I did mention earlier, one downside to this board is you cannot simply mount it straight to the bottom. You're either going to need to use mounting posts or use something like this that I have 3D printed. And this is a carrier tray that I have have made for it. Now I will put the STL for this in the description of the video as well, but the basics are with this is that the board will simply clip in and stay in place. Now I haven't clipped it in yet because I do need to screw the carrier through the bottom of the board and I do have a feeling that once I clip it into this I'm probably not going to be easily able to get it out. So the first thing we are going to do is remove the existing controller off the board. So what I need to do is actually prise up the self-adhesive tape that is currently holding the carrier board mini. Now this is actually quite thick foam self-adhesive that I have used and I will probably aim to actually put this back on just to help give a little bit of vibration isolation. It is worth noting that the carrier board, um, uh, sorry, the uh, 
Q Purple doesn't have onboard vibration isolation. And whilst I shouldn't need it in this application, it is always handy to have it there. So the next thing we are going to do is take our carrier board off of the carrier board mini. So we're going to undo the four screws that are located in the bottom. That one is not my best screwdriver. Let me get the one that is, this one here. For this application. And we are going to simply undo and then undo the one that's hiding under the foam up there. And very carefully withdraw the screws. Now it's going to be worth noting that we do need to be a little careful here on the screw lengths. Now we've removed the uh, mini board we're going to actually need to be careful of the length of the screws that we're going to use to put it into this controller because whilst we were using the long screws on this one it is worth noting that those screws are actually going through all of this depth that isn't in place on here. Now they do actually ship this with, as I said earlier, this PDB board, as well as you do get these little standoffs as well, but these are for the outside section and not the inside section. So we do need to be a little careful. So what we are going to do, first of all, is mount the board on the new carrier making sure that we get it the correct way and that is the cube purple mounted nicely from there and then I'm going to look at what I actually need to do to uh, use the same screws if I wanted to being careful not to have them too long now obviously using those ones is going to be way too long, way, 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 way too long. So what we need to do is actually find the shorter screws. Now the shorter screws are actually the ones that come with the standard cube when you're mounting it onto a normal carrier board. So I'm gonna grab a set of them now. Okay, whilst doing this screw section, what I found is actually all of the screws are too long and you actually need to cut them down to make them the right length, depending on what controller you're using. Now, because I am using the Cube Purple, it is a lot shorter. So we're going to need to make sure that we have the right screws. Now, what I'm doing is simply taking one of the original screws just like this and chopping it down with a pair of pliers. It's quite soft material, so I'm simply snipping it through doing a nice clean cut and I am then very carefully screwing that into the board making sure that I am not cross threading it screwing it down until it's tight and then using that to mount the carrier and then I've done that with the four screws located in each corner so if you do have the original long ones just like this you do need to chop them down for using with this i haven't had any problems with it cross threading whilst doing it but it is something to be aware of anyways okay so now the carrier board is fitted all screwed in place we're going to clip it into this board now i only wanted to do this at the very end of screwing it in because i have a feeling that once i do clip this in i'm not going to actually be able to get it out now the way i've 3d printed this is in such a way that it will hold the board in place with clips that run all the way around it so what i'm going to do is gently put it in but i'm probably going to need a little bit of pressure on this just to clip it in what i think i'll do is i'll move the rover to the side for a second and then i will pop the board in place and then put the little bit of pressure on and then I think what I will need to do is just bend it out slightly just to allow the clip that I've made to go past let's try it the other side I could have made the board a lit box a little bit bigger but it does fit in nicely but there are some barbs is the right term to use just to hold it all in is that side going down there we go 
can see we're s he's just beginning to clip in. Actually, what I think I'll do is I might take those barbs down a touch. This is the first time I've actually tried fitting this and it is very, very tight. Once it's in, it's certainly not going to come out. And alternatively, you know, I could actually screw it in place if I wanted to, but I preferred having it in this sort of clipping method to hold the board rather than a screw. There we go. That was that side moving. And again, it's as I pop him in. There we go. Making sure that the board does seat down nicely in place. There we go. Clipped in. And now it is absolutely solid in that carrier. And then I can actually then use the self-adhesive tape to hold this down in the rover. So if we get the rover back in place, what we're going to want to do then is take some double-sided tape, self-adhesive, just like this. What I'm then going to do is just run this down the back of the connectors. Give it a tear off. I'll actually cut that with a Stanley to Stanley that off nice and tidy. There we go. It's a bit tidier. Make sure that that is all down as I want it to be. It's not folded over at all. There we go. Peel the double sided tape back. Bit of extra on the end, but I'm not worried about that. And then align this correctly because that is the forward side of the rover. So I want to make sure again, whenever you're fitting your controller, that you do have it pointing the right way as well. And then for me, what we're going to do is mount it and then eyeball where is straight when I am happy with it and then press him down and again I will redo all of my calibrations on this once it's in just so it does 100% align there we go nicely in and I'm now able to then start reconnecting all of my other stuff so what we have is my power module which is actually going to live just down the side there again with some nice new double-sided tape and he's going to live just down there we're then going to clip in our power one so we just want to make sure we know which one that is i think it is that one there i'll check that in a minute and then we will have our rc cables coming over to our headers over here and again, we will double check which connections goes on to, but that's it looking nice and tidy. Okay, so the new carrier is now installed and I've actually got the wiring correct. Now it is worth noting that the wiring on this carrier board is quite a bit different than it is on the standard one, specifically around the PWM pins. And you do want to check out the manual, which is available for this carrier board. Again, I'll show it on screen now and also put a link to it in the description of the video as well. But it does show you that the pin layouts are slightly different. And actually that was power two, not power one. So I've moved that connector over. We've then got our UART located over here as well. So we are all set up back and running. Now that is pretty much it for this video. I will do a number of other videos on my Rover build as it continues. This one was simply about showing you the carrier board from Airbot Systems if you were interested in having one for your cube. Now, for me, it's worked out quite nicely because I've now got all the connectors on top and I've also been able to plug in the external USB for the cube as well, which is a nice addition on the side too. That is it for this one. If you found the video useful, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description of this video as well. That's it.